If you are looking for AI solutions for meta ads to scale your e-com brand from 30K to 100K per month, this video is for you because I'm going to walk you through the exact step-by-step -step workflows that my agency has created over the last few months to completely scale meta ads for e-com brands. Without further ado, let's hop into it. Hey guys, my name's Chris Morano. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I help scale e-com brands from six, seven to eight figures and beyond using Google ads, Facebook ads, and Klaviyo for retention. We're not gonna get into the weeds with all of that today. We are going to dive directly in to my N8N. Now, this is only one project within a folder of a setup that we have built out. Now the key to this is understanding we are an agency. We work with countless e-com brands. And so what we've built might be a little more complicated than what you need. But in our scenario, we wanted to check all of these different boxes. So because we have multiple accounts, we essentially need to have multiple workflows. And so you'll see this is the most basic workflow. And if you follow me on LinkedIn, you've seen snapshots of this, but I wanted to dive into it for my YouTube audience to understand what is going on behind the scenes. So this is just a Google Sheet with our client roster, our access tokens, our ad account numbers, and we are looping these over once this workflow, the next workflow is completed. Simple enough, straightforward. So from here, what you're gonna see across YouTube right now is a bunch of generic workflows because total addressable market is massive. We are building custom solutions to what we need, managing multiple accounts, the creative aspect, and the media buying aspect. And you'll never see anything like this on YouTube. I can promise you that. So what we're doing, this execution, simple enough when it is call, called by the previous workflow. We are generating a doc template within our Google Drive, and we are calling on the Facebook Graph API. Now, if you guys have never used the Graph API, leave a comment down below. I will make a video because this is a nightmare to figure out. You'll see that we're using the version 22, which is the latest. This is the account number that we are working in. We were calling the ads edge. From here, you can see we have a substantial amount of fields that we are pulling from the Graph API. As we go through, we are integrating code nodes into here. So what we're pulling is we wanna see only ads with insights. Moving forward, we're processing all of those results from this. Now you guys might be saying, this looks great, does it work? And you can clearly see it works across the board. Couple errors here because we were running them too quickly in sync together. But all of this data, I'm not one of these people, copy this into the editor and that one. And you can see everything has a check because I do not believe in showing people something with the assumption that it works. This actually does work. So from here, we're doing a loop basically we are using, you have to pull using pagination from the Graph API, and so we're looping these through. What we're doing is we are putting a limit on that loop. Essentially, this can run forever, and so we wanna put a loop on there, and we're pulling an HTTP request in order to gather all the data. From there, only ads with insights. Again, kind of the same workflow, over and over. Now, if you're already super confused and you want to get to the end to figure out how this all works, how this benefits us, you can skip forward, but I'm gonna walk through some other workflows so you can start to understand how it all syncs together. So from there, you can see we're updating the doc that's initially made in that second node there. From there, we are pulling all video ads to extract the URLs. We are merging all of these. We are aggregating them and then kicking them out to another workflow. From here, this one goes to our benchmarking workflow. And down here, we're taking the product page URLs and we're scraping them for USP analysis. Moving on, we have the creative asset extraction node, which actually is going to be turned off soon enough, but essentially, we're pulling all the top ads and we're pulling all the bottom ads and we're an analyzing the top and the bottom. 
Moving forward to number four. We are then taking the data and we are classifying each one of them. Again, executions succeeded today, May 20th. We can copy to editor. And so essentially what we're doing, is we're using OpenAI and we are asking them as a creative strategist to determine what all of these ads are within here. We're looping that over, updating the doc again, going to workflow number five. From here, we're diving into pattern recognition. We want to isolate of the benchmarks and of the creative assets that we are pulling, we want to understand what is happening. And so the prompt in this scenario is an AI specialist in creative pattern recognition for ad performance. Your parameters are X, use statistical significance based on conversion rate, CTR, KPIs, and all of that is starting to classify these various insights of data on every single ad that comes in top performer, bottom performer to understand is it curiosity driven? Is it a sales promotion? All of these different aspects in relation to our messaging and how they are correlating with these results. From here, we're going into Anthropic and we are isolating creative performance of the meta, active ad campaigns, data points, identified patterns, creative element breakdown, pattern impact summary, and actionable recommendations for our creative strategists. Now I'd keep going, but overall, you're getting the gist of how we're able to utilize these tools to effectively gain insights that previously would have taken hours and hours per account to figure out. We we're analyzing conversion rates, CPMs, CTRs, cost per clicks, ROAS, purchase volume, purchase value, taking all of this information, storing them in databases to understand how certain messaging and themes and correlations we can extract to determine winning ads and not so winning ads. So all of this is phenomenal. You're like, okay, so what is the output of this? Why are all these workflows in place to give us a bunch of information? Essentially, that document that I showed you provides us with account level benchmarks over specific time frames: seven days, 14 days, 30 days. The AI agent side of things can be real time when we can just directly ask what is the top performing ad based on click through rate in the last three days. The database has that information stored so that we're able to in real time communicate with these different agents once top agent with three bottom agents, creative analysis, data analysis, and a creative strategist. And the reports that are generated look something like this. So one of these workflows generates this level of report. Concept one, creative theme, core messages, hook variations, primary message variations, theme specific hooks, to identify, hey, we want our graphic designers to create a problem solution ad that says your coffee deserves better origins, H2 subtext, theme application, all of this information, visual treatments, call to actions, concept two, concept three, and in this scenario, three concepts that are all backed by data because we're now understanding how these different messages are resulting in the effectiveness of our ads. This is how you use N8N for Facebook ads. If you guys want more videos on this, leave a comment down below. I'm happy to help walk through more of this information. I am not an AI expert. I am learning. We are making mistakes. We have literally hired team members to help us execute on these ideas and they are coming to life in real time. Now make sure you watch this video up here where we're gonna walk you through the account structure that is resulting in phenomenal performance using this information. We'll see you guys in that video.